In today's episode, we are going to trash talk with Hannah from Salon Environment. You're going to learn how to reduce your salon waste without stress or guilt. Salon owners, make sure you get the free holistic salon audit in the show notes so that it can support your journey step by step. Welcome to the Salon Owners Holistic Blueprint, your podcast for unlocking the secrets to a thriving salon business through holistic practices. I'm Jacqueline Rodriguez, your host. And join me each week as we explore wellness, sustainability, and business success. Everything from attracting conscious clients to adopting eco-friendly practices. We're going to cover it all to elevate your salon business. All right. Welcome back to the Salon Owners Holistic Blueprint Podcast. In today's episode, we are going to trash talk with Hannah from Salon Environment. You're going to learn how to reduce your salon waste without stress or guilt. Salon owners, make sure you get the free holistic salon audit in the show notes so that it can support your journey step by step. Hannah, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. This is, I think, your second time on with, I, the first time was with Green Beauty Community. Um, so I would love for you to like reintroduce yourself and then we can like start trash talking, which I think is so cute. <laughs> um, Jacqueline, thanks for having me on again. I seriously just love talking with you and spending time with you and love what you're doing with the podcast. So it's an honor to be here. Um, so for those who don't know me, um, my name is Hannah. Um, I do run a small business called Salon Environment. While we are based in Detroit, Michigan, we love to trash talk all over uh, the country and a little bit outside of the country, but uh, the U.S. is our main focus. <laughs> and by trash talk, like we're not going to actually trash talk anybody or anything, we're actually talking trash and waste <laughs> management in your salon. And that's really what we're going to go deep into because you have got so much expertise in this, in really helping salons get rid of their trash. And I, what I love about it is more so that it's not just getting rid of your trash. It really is without the stress or the guilt because you know, some of us, it just stresses us out. And the, uh, like the other half of us also just, we feel guilty about getting rid of things, um, or holding on to things or all sorts of things like that. So <laughs> we're going to dive into all of that today, but tell us about like your background and how you got into all of this. So I've been a licensed cosmetologist for 10 years, and I worked at a 25 um, stylist salon, which was also full service, but um, salon for seven years. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was definitely the, I feel like the salons that, you know, hustle and bustle, no time for, you know, no time for really kind of, uh, we were all very booked and it was awesome. It was a fun um, you know, high traffic, uh, just experience, which I think is always really fun, at least for a short time. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I mentioned that just because, you know, you're in a high, you're in a high kind of stress environment and I, not that it was necessarily stressful at the time, but right. You're hustling. It's go, go, go. Um, so you really don't have any time to think of anything otherwise, except, you know, make, you know, doing, everything that you do in your service, you know, making sure your clients are happy. I was never really someone that double booked anyway, but I was someone that always had everything down to a time, how I wash my bowls while I'm putting in, my, you know, my client's notes. Um, so I'm saying this because I, <laughs> I, waste management is not going to be top of your mind anyway. <laughs> right. But I had kind of, I, I don't want to say an epiphany because it's, I've always been someone who, you know, really loves the environment and the conservation of the environment. Um, and, you know, and growing up on the belief that, you know, recycling is like the greatest thing in the world, which it totally can be. It's a very cool, you know, there's a lot of cool things that have come from, um, you know, just those kind of innovations, but, you know, it's 2019, it's pre pandemic. And I kind of just, uh, I realized that we weren't recycling all of our bottles and 25 stylists, uh, we go through so much product 
And you only get, you know, what, 32 ounces usually for a back bar, um, you know, for the large bottles. Yep. So, I mean, wow. Um, so that was such a huge eye opener for me when I realized we didn't recycle them. And we had a recycling center down the street from the salon I worked at. So I just like looked at my, um, looked at, <laughs> looked at one of the owners and I go, what are we doing with this? And he goes, we put it in the trash. And I go, you know, just give it to me because our inventory, um, how they did inventory was they put it all in a bin, plastic bottles, um, you know, all the color boxes. Um, so it's all really simple stuff to recycle. It's paper, cardboard and uh, number two plastic, which shampoo bottles, it's highly recyclable. So, yeah, I <laughs> so I kept telling him, I'm just I'm like, just give me the bag. I set up a whole system just for myself because I was working since I was working there at the time. And um, eventually just I was burnt out being in the salon, even though I like loved it, but I just needed a change of scenery. Um, you know, tensions were high during 2020 anyway. So I was just very emotional and growing up going to national parks and being on the west side of the country. Um, we took road trips all the time. And Washington and California were literally on fire, you know, and um, there wasn't really a slowdown. I think at the time, I think it was like really, you know, rapidly, um, you know, just spreading. So, and I felt like I couldn't do anything. And so I would like go into the color room and cry for a few minutes and then like go out and, you know, whatever, do my usual thing. And I'm like, what's wrong here? Like I... I need to do something about this. I feel like I need to do something about this in order to at least not feel so much, I guess, eco anxiety is really kind of the best term. Um, so I, and I knew I couldn't do that when I worked, while I was working in a salon, um, I was just too tired to really do anything else kind of outside of that. Um, and because like, I'm such a people pleaser and I'm okay being there, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. And, but I like, you know, I was like, I can't do that if I'm doing this. So I don't know what I was doing. Um, when I quit my job in October of 2020. Um, so I kept recycling for the salon. I just wanted to test beta test some stuff out on them. I like made signs, um, and, you know, for them, just, you know, which bins were for what, you know, this is just for foil. And it was great because I already knew how it was set up, you know. So I started collecting their foil. Um, I still took the uh, paper and cardboard and plastic. I gave, I like bought some bins just from, you know, I think Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever was down the street. Mm -hmm. I labeled those too. Um, I just, I just like drew on marker on these signs and I'm like, this is great. <laughs> um, wow. What a long way. Um, but, and you know, I just was like, okay, why, you know, what can we do from this? How can I make it also so easy for my hairstylist? Um, and I will say this like probably in every single interview or article or whatever, I think beauty professionals are are superheroes they're incredible and I see the hustle and bustle and like so much respect to them like they you know they are really the unsung heroes so I just I truly have just been working on the last three you know four years um of just how how can I support them and how can I also just like provide a you know help the impact of a clean you know for a cleaner environment um, so there's a lot of different ways to do that. I love that. And the thing about hairstylists, I mean, we truly are very heart centered for the most part. Like we, we care, we are of service and that's what makes us such amazing, I think, leaders and each hairstylist, I, you are a leader. People look up to us. So I think that that is huge. And that is something that I always preach as well is that we really do have such big hearts and it's important for us to realize that we get to like give back to ourselves, not work 60 or 70 hours a week. And also like 
I think it is a big responsibility on us to start learning like what is actually happening in the world and kudos for you to stop and actually think about like, okay, this is bothering me. What can I do about it? Because typically we don't, right? That's our typical thing is we're just too busy. We don't have the time. We don't have the energy. We don't have the resources, but you did that, right? And that takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of um, just innovation in within yourself to really think about like, this is something that is a big, important thing. I know that there's only so much I can do and I want to help others start making those changes. So that's huge. And I really applaud you and just thank you for doing that because that as a salon owner, I know that sometimes we don't have the time to think through those things. Like it is important to me, but that's only because it's been Like it took me a decade to get there, right? Like there was a lot of different things and I made it important because my values were greater than just being busy in the salon. So being able to help other salon owners figure out how to start breaking that waste management down and making it easy and making it fun. I, I think that's like, that's what I want to dive into today. Like, let's break all of that down. How can we do that as busy salon owners? Thank you for joining today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed the training. And if you have any questions about anything I talked about in today's training, or honestly, anything I've talked about on this podcast, I want you to go to www.cleanbeautybiz.com dot com slash advisor or you can click the link in the show notes where you can ask me any questions you have about this episode or anything else that I have covered on this podcast. Again that link is www.cleanbeautybiz.com and this amazing little tool allows you to get your specific questions answered by me 24-7. So I will say, and I know people are probably going to be like, oh my gosh, this is such a plug, but I truly believe in the power of partnerships and outsourcing. Um, Because again, and I thought this was a really great point that was made um, actually in a conversation that you and I were in yesterday from our friend Mikey was people, people don't wake up and they're like, how do I destroy the planet? They're just like, how do I just have a real, how do I do a really great job in, you know, for whatever they're doing? Um, They have to keep things running. They have to make sure everything is going smoothly. So, but also like, um, and I believe he also provided this example, CEOs have these different departments for a reason. They, um, and again, I don't know if it was you or Mikey that said this, but um, they have a marketing team. They have financial advisors. They like I. They have salespeople. So I am, and I truly feel that way for um, I guess just environmentalism or uh, sustainability networks. You know, they are usually and and I should say, this is everyone, by the way, like I get a lot of my information from these organizations and these networks as well, too. Um, But, um, you know, they, they are up to date of what's going on in policy, which is huge, um, because there's not really a lot of, there's a lot of environmental policy, um, a lot of grants that are available to help um, really push just innovation, or keeping companies accountable for, you know, whether it's like pollution um, or, you know, having legit recycling systems or just waste management in general. Um, And, you know, on top of that, where it's even just down to uh, social science, where it's like, okay, how, and and systems, which is something obviously you're very familiar with. Um, but it's just like, how, how do you make this, you know, as easy as possible and 
where you don't have to stay up until 3 a.m., you know, on Reddit, just trying to find anything you can of like, what can I do better? You have someone someone that can help you. Um, or obviously community is important when you surround yourself with like-minded community people. Um, I found a lot of um, community, I felt like in my local um, Citizens Climate Lobby um, chapter, um, mm -hmm. which they focus on nonpartisan environmental um, bills, essentially, and lobbying for them and championing them. So I found a lot of community with them, with the Sustainable Business Network in my area. Um, and then, you know, which came to what you and I get to be, you know, a part of, which is so fun, but the green beauty community. So I, whether it's outsourcing or just finding community, I feel like is so important because we really are a social species and we learn so much from each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, so there's, there's so much that people can do in order to, you know, be, you know, for lack of a better term, be more sustainable, um, reduce their carbon footprint, I guess, to like, put it lightly. Um, there's, uh, you know, or just have a, a guilt-free conscious. Cause honestly, um, I feel like we, you know, put a lot on ourselves to whatever it is, save the community, save the planet. Um, and, and I am a true believer if, if you don't put any sort of energy towards that, that eats you alive. So when you're able to put something towards it, whether you start recycling, maybe you are using, you know, a product that just has cleaner ingredients, I feel like that at least helps alleviate that. This episode is brought to you by the Holistic Salon Academy. At the Academy, you gain access to knowledge, tools, and a thriving community you need to excel in the clean, green, and sustainable beauty business. By joining the Holistic Salon Academy, you become a pioneer in a new era of beauty and wellness. Oh, for sure. I feel like every small little piece that we do, and I do preach this a lot to like every small little change that you make will have a huge impact, right? So breaking that down, and I love how you brought that to our attention of, I mean, CEOs, we really do have somebody for everything. And, or, or I should say we should, right? I am also a CEO and I don't have, like, I am marketing team. I am, you know, some, a lot of the hats. But what is important for us to recognize here is even when we're talking about like, let's say marketing, I am not a marketing guru. I end up finding support one way or the other. Either I hire somebody or I start listening to a different, like I get a coach to help me or I just really start doing some research and taking things that I've learned and implementing them. But I don't, it's not like I am the guru. So the, the same thing is going to happen when we're talking about sustainability and waste management in the salon. You do not need to reinvent the wheel. There are a lot of things out there. So for instance, for salon owners, you do have the green beauty community. Well, that's for any beauty professional, right? Um, but we're speaking mainly to salon owners or suite owners where you're making the changes in the salon, right? You have teams reach out to them, get into the green beauty community, learn a little bit, or find a coach that has already done it. Like you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You get to support, like lean on support people to have that in there and create those systems in your salon. So I find it really inspiring that you as a stylist, like started to make some change. So taking that and if you are just a stylist working in another salon like bringing that up to your salon owner and opening those conversations and seeing what can be changed because just one person can make a really big difference in a 25 seat uh, salon like that's insane you know you get you made a big difference and you're helping them even now that you left you're still helping them implement those systems so that they can have waste management and feel good about the, the impact that they are having with their salon. 
Well, I will say I don't recycle for them anymore, but I do have a few salons that I do um, help recycling for. And, um, and again, I've, and from that, I've learned just, well, I have free education on my website that's like curated for this specifically, um, just in terms of like, well, what are some easy things that I can recycle? What are the webs? Like, it's honestly stuff that I, <laughs> that I do. Like I, like, for example, I use um, Earth 911 or Recycle Nation all the time to at least give me a start of like, okay, well, where can these people start maybe recycling? Or is that even an option, um, you know, before then going into their county website um, and so on and so forth. But um, but I, I have created a lot of really great relationships of just... It, I sh not even relationships, but conversations mm -hmm. of then, you know, like, hey, what, um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, why is recycling important? Um, why even like reducing from the get go is important, but then there's not really a lot of um, options for that. So then what can you do from there? Okay, what are brands that are doing it? Okay, how can I talk to the brands that I do want to um, maybe have, you know, larger packaging. Um, so then they don't have to buy as often. They don't have to throw away as many bottles. What can I say to these brands? Um, Cause if an, it's like what you said, if enough people do it, it's a huge impact. Um, yeah. So if you've got, you know, a million people messaging, you know, and any of the brands, I'm not going to name drop anyone, but yeah any of the brands to say, Hey, um, I want, I want bulk packaging. I yeah. want you to make it happen. They're going to make it happen because you're buying their product. So there's a lot of, um, I mean, just a lot of really great impact we can do. And especially, um, even also with recycling, you don't have a recycling system or, you know, there's not really a good facility nearby. You email your city clerk, you email your mayor, whatever, and you say, I want this to change. What can we, do? like, you know, what can you do? Um, and, you know, they're the ones that will then take care of, okay, let's get funding for it. Let's get a grant for this. Enough people speak up, they're going to do it. If one person does it, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But um, but enough people do it, they're, they're going to put that on the docket because they know it's important. Well, change is stronger in numbers. When we have numbers of people who really do want change, that's when it's it's going to start actually taking place. So I think that that's amazing. Like, it, you know, reach out. And that's why we started the Green Beauty Community is to create those numbers. So we have like-minded people who are in the same place. We can start talking about how we make change. So I think the first thing would be like, if, whoever's listening, if you're not in the green beauty community, um, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Come join us. Let's have some fun over there. And it's a fun party. Of, it is such a fun party. And we have so much information and education there. Plus making sure that you stay up to date with the podcast, because this is what we talk about in the podcast, all sorts of things from everything, holistic, sustainable, clean, and green. We try to put out as much information out there as possible. So there is information out there for you. And then getting into these rooms where you have like-minded people. So if you're just starting out your journey, team up with some people who have already been through the journey, ask them questions. Cause we, in the sustainable world, like we really do want to just help and support you any way possible. So we're open. We want to talk to you about it. And this is like, we could talk all day for hours about this <laughs> as we usually do. Um, <laughs> but I think getting into that, that idea of like, what is important to you about sustainability where do you start getting into some of these resources and then asking the questions, like asking for support. You don't have to do this all alone. Thank you for joining today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed the training. And if you have any questions about anything I talked about in today's training, or honestly, anything I've talked about on this podcast, I want you to go to www.cleanbeautybiz.com slash advisor, 
or you can click the link in the show notes where you can ask me any questions you have about this episode or anything else that I have covered on this podcast. Again, that link is www.cleanbeautybiz.com and this amazing little tool allows you to get your specific questions answered by me 24 seven. Um, and Hannah, I, we do have to like be mindful of time, but I would love to hop on another call. Like let's do another podcast. Let's go deeper into like the politics and all sorts of different things. Um, but right now let them know where they can find you. So, um, you can find me at, uh, salon environment it is all of my handles. Um, the website is also just salonvironment.com. Um, that is my Instagram name, my Facebook name. Um, it's very easy. It's salon environment without the E N, um, in environment. So, um, but yeah, we're fun. We, uh, we just like to do all the things. We just like to do all the things. We just, we really do just want to help. As Jacqueline said, I, you know, especially you put the beauty industry and you put, um, you know, I guess sustainability or environmentalism with that. It's really just a lot of, it really is a lot of heart and it really is just wanting to do better for, um, for your clients, for your community, for just, I don't know, the world. The earth, you know, we, we only have one earth. So Breaking that down is really, really simple. You don't have to feel like you have to do everything. And there are so many resources out there. I will make sure that all of your links are listed below so that they can easily find you and um, follow you for more information. Thank you for your knowledge and your wisdom and just for being you. I, you know, I love you and everything that you put out there. So I appreciate you being in my circle. Well, the feeling is so mutual. This has been such a fun year just getting to like do stuff together. (laughs) So I I appreciate this time. Thank you, Jacqueline. And I can't wait for even more time. Like we are just getting started. (laughs) We've got uh, the rest of forever. Let's go. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you for watching and make sure that you go ahead and follow us and ask us any questions. We are here for you. I always say this in every episode, but really we're humans on the other side of that DM, of that comment, of that email, we want to support you. So thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in to the Salon Owners Holistic Blueprint. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to follow and subscribe. Until next time, stay inspired, stay passionate, and keep thriving in the world of holistic beauty.